your life was really all about sports, wasn't it? Yeah. You were a true Canadian kid, all about sports. Oh, yeah. But, uh... Then you found golf. Yeah. This is where I broke windows. Didn't know. Stand up there and hit hot down here and crack. crack. These trees weren't here. I didn't know what, that timing hit the ball further. Geez, how come I'm hitting it further and further and further? You didn't know that your, your timing was getting better in those days and that. Well, getting lucky. Oh, we say getting lucky, getting how lucky. How did your parents react when they had the oh, paper window? Didn't like it, boy. <laughs> 75 cents, a dollar and a quarter for a I mean, window. There's a knock on a window. By the way, your son, Murray. Oh, oh no Whoa. sense running. Cops knew it was me. Watch this, Todd. <laughs> There's the best Ooh. one yet. Ooh. That's the flight right there. That's sweet. Yeah, that's... That'll roll like crazy. Why, sure. Go to the park. <laughs> For a 70 year old. <laughs> Getting longer every day I go out. <laughs> the only senior in the world getting longer. It's still straight. So sometimes when I listen to Mo talk about his life experiences, you catch little glimpses of his learning process. Because if you ask somebody who's an expert at something, how they learn something, they, they, they've been through so much and they've practiced and been through the trial and error process that you never really get the insight on, on how it actually happened. So we have, to, we have to piece together a lot of times how experts like Mo Norman learned to be so good at hitting a golf ball and how they learned what they did. And one of the things that Mo said in a clip that I was watching recently was he said when he was younger and hitting golf balls, he used to break windows out in the houses in his neighborhood. And the reason he broke the first window out was because when he was practicing in the field, he couldn't hit it very far. And all of a sudden one day the ball went further and it went too far and it broke out a house window. So the question is, and, and what the, Mo, the comment Mo made was, was my timing got better. My timing started getting better. So this is what's interesting about the process here of what is timing and what is sequencing and how does that happen? Like how, how, do you, how does your timing get better? And I'm gonna go back to what I've, what I've been talking to you about in this entire video series, which is that how can you have great timing and great sequencing in your swing? And timing and sequencing are different, and I'll explain that in a second. But how can you have great timing and great sequencing if you have bad positions. So if your address is bad and your backswing is bad and you're out of position, how can you sequence that? Matter of fact, the opposite's gonna happen. You're gonna create a bad sequence because of bad positions. So what you hear in Mo's voice, and this is the insight you can get from this, what you're hearing there is that as his technique improved, as his positions improved, his sequencing improved, which means he started hitting it further and further and further, and his timing got better because his mechanics got better. So that's what you need to learn and hear in that. Now, let's talk about the difference between timing and sequencing. Sequencing is pretty simple. You know, we use a lot of terms as golf instructors. We just confuse people to death half the time. But, but timing and sequencing, when you're looking at it from a mechanical standpoint, are different. Sequencing is, is making sure things work in the proper order. I'll give you an example. So sequencing is when, when I take everything moves together kind of in the same, at the same time here. And then what happens is from here, the arms and hands move up. And then, then you're going to see the first part of the sequence is lower body moves forward. And then you're going to see the torso move second and the arms move third. And then when I get to here, here come the hands and then the club. So that's a sequence of events. We have the uh, lower body moving first, torso moving second, arms moving third, hands moving fourth, club moving fifth. Whereas if you don't want to do this, you don't want, to, you don't want the arms going before the, before the pelvis. That would be out of sequence, right? So sequencing is really the proper order of the body parts, which is something in biomechanics you study quite a bit. But what is timing? Right? Timing is a little bit different. Timing is making sure, for example, this is the proper sequence. So if I go here and I go lower body first, then upper body second, and then it takes too long 
to get my arms to move, that would be still in sequence, but out of timing. So timing, sequencing is getting it in the proper order. Timing is making sure it happens in the right time so we get the speed at the right time. So I want to walk you through how sequencing and, time, sequencing and timing work together. I got a little thing here I want to show you how I train with that. So what I do is I'm, I, I'm, not a big, I'm not a big proponent that you have to slow down your swing. I'm not a guy that says slow and slow. Don't believe any of that crap. I don't believe that you have to swing it slow. I don't believe in tempo. I believe there is a tempo, but I don't believe that you got to work on tempo. And here's why. The swing is happening in less than a second. You can't think faster than your swing. Your brain does not process faster than your motion. So when you think a thought, when you think about timing, the motion has already occurred. So that causes a lot of problems with golfers because they're trying to think their way through the timing of a golf swing. It's not, I'm not saying you can't once in a while get away with hitting a good shot with lots of thoughts. That's not going to happen. What you have to do is you have to create a, you have to put your body, this is where positions come in. This is, I'm going to go full circle here in this conversation. This is where sequencing comes in and positioning comes in. If I put my body in flawless positions, in other words, mistake-proof positions, positions where the body is limited. If I, if I can put the body in positions where it's limited in its motion, I can then put them in the proper sequence. And then I can go as fast as I want. It sounds weird, right? I can go as fast as I want. And then I, can, then I don't have to worry about timing. Let me restate this. If I can put the body in the proper positions, right, to where they can, only, they can only go so far, and I'll give you an example in a second, then I can sequence the body correctly because it can only go so far, and then I can swing as fast as I want, and then I get the timing right. See how I did that? Positions of the body, which makes it sequence correct, but then I can go as fast as I want. All right, I'll give you an example, starting with lower body. And I'll just start even with the feet. So if I put the feet in position, right, and I keep this, my legs pretty straight, which I want them almost locked out, but pretty straight, lead foot turned out, and I brace against this trail leg, and I keep this foot on the ground, right there, and I work against the inside of that trail leg, it's limited my pelvis motion, right? I've limited. I, I can't go more than this, as long as I keep that knee in position. I've limited my ability to turn my pelvis. You want a limitation. Because what happens is when I limit that position, it allows this timing, the sequence of my upper body and my arms to go into this position. See what just happened? Limitation here allowed this to keep going. But when I get to here, right here, see what happens? I, my upper body is limited, and the only thing I can move now are my arms and my hands. See that? So it goes limitation, limitation, limitation. I can't really go any further than that. So because of that sequence of events, because of the p limitations of my body, position-wise, it created a sequence of events. Let's do it in the downswing. Limitation, 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 limitation. There's some movement with the upper body, but limitate, limitation, and then movement with the upper body. And then this is completely limited. And then it only allows this to move, right? So that's my braking system. So the limitations being created on this side allow the sequencing of this side. Now, you create these limitations in the body, which creates the sequencing through positions, which now allows me, and I'll hit a ball here, it allows me now to, to swing as fast as I want and hit those positions. I've learned the positions of my body. And I can literally swing as hard as I want because Timing doesn't matter if I'm hitting my sequence. See what I'm saying? I don't ever think about timing of my golf swing, ever. I don't think about sequencing. I do exactly what Mo said, and he says it when, I, when he's on the range talking to him. How do you master the swing? You gotta master the positions, because the positions mean sequence, and the sequence means timing. Here's our way again. Watch this for purity. It's so pure. That's so good. I'm feeling a greatness. Right That's so good. If, uh, if young golfers wanted to learn to play Mo's way, you took like, Todd under your wing, and uh, you, you've taught Todd some, some stuff that you haven't shared with with really everybody. Oh, no. Oh, and, uh, well, he's dedicated to you. He wants it. He wants it. Yeah. He doesn't keep feeding with it. 
here, but not here. Yeah. He does. I can tell. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's improving. Yeah, I could see that too. I he's improving. Too. But you turned off pretty good now. When you first saw that swing, was it? Oh, yeah. He probably looks like me. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I'm open my eyes and ears, ain't he? Probably his, his nerve life is giving their life up to move. The way I'm moving. Holy Jesus. Well, this is, I don't, I don't even want to think about this, but uh, some, someday, uh, many years from now, you're not going to be around. Do you think Todd could teach people this stuff? Oh, yeah, because he's, he's been doing pretty good, too. Yeah. That's all he's got he too, certainly. He's the only one that really knows it. That really knows it. I mean, I think they do. But he says, he does so many things, too. But <laughs> you've got to be with him to, to learn it all. Does it make you feel good that like people like Todd are, are trying to train people? Oh, sure. I must have something to say. Sure. Yeah. Well, I don't get hurt. I never heard in my life.